Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Layer by Layer. Today we're going to make an adjustment to a very simple project. This is a NinjaFlex pocket for a 500 milliamp LiPo battery. So we've used this before on projects like our beach bag or uh, Stego spikes or even the Daft Punk helmet. So it's just a, a sleeve printed in NinjaFlex, which is flexible filament, um, so that we can protect the battery and be able to embed it in places without having to use like gaffer's tape or something like that. So it's a really easy way to embed um, batteries into your projects. Um, but uh, what we wanted to do was to make, uh, we wanted to add sewing tabs so that we can um, attach this to a flexible textile. Um, so what we came up with is that if we add tabs on the sides here, like we have done with other projects, we're gonna run into some overhanging issues. Um, because the way it's printed, this is actually the bottom of the print and it prints upwards because if we were to print it any other orientation, you would run into bigger uh, overhang problems. So Dano Wall, who works at Adafruit, had a really clever idea where why not just add the sew holes into the body of the pocket itself? So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, it's a really uh, easy update to this project. And we're using 123D Design. Um, I originally created this in 123D Design, and although I could redesign it in Fusion 360 and use sketches so that it's driven dynamically with uh, dimensions, I, I don't want to spend too much time on it, so I figured I'd just show you guys uh, a real quick way and why I kind of still like 123D, especially for these type of really quick projects. Uh, so let's take a look now. So the first thing I need to do is actually increase the height of it, and to do that we can just hit P on our keyboard and then select the face that we want to pull or increase. So I can pull this guy. I want to increase it by six millimeters because um, that's how much it needs to be in order to take up the whole battery. So it's six. So this big cylinder here is uh, a shape that I'm just using uh, to make a sort of opening so that your thumb can come in and take the battery out. If you look at the bottom, why is this shape here? This is going to be used to make a hole so that air can come in through the bottom and not make this suction because that's what we uh, found out when we printed it without this hole at the bottom. It was actually really hard to get out because the tolerances are really tight on the battery. We actually got it stuck one time. We had to cut it off. <laughs> so that's why that hole is there. So the next thing is um, I want to make these, tab uh, these little holes here, here, and here, and here. Basically, it's two holes uh, for every corner. And we're having two holes because that's how you can sew it. You can sew through one loop and pretty much like that. Um, so to do that, <laughs> I'll use a cylinder primitive. And when you make uh, objects, you get to s they snap into the center of other objects. That's really nice. I'm going to set the radius to 1, which is actually a diameter of 2. And I'll make the height 10. And then just click Enter like that. Next thing I'll do is I'll select it and hit Command T on my keyboard. And this is one thing I really take for granted in 123D is the way when you hit Command T and you want to transform or move an object, it's so smart that it knows to be in the absolute center of the object. In 123D, it doesn't do, or in Fusion 360, you don't get that feature, which is uh, unfortunate. But I'll put it up in the corner there. Hit Command C, Command V to copy and paste it. Then just move it down by. Uh, you know, 3.5 millimeters. So once I have my two uh, cylinders here, I'll move them again and then push it inward so that it inter inter intersects with that first um, sort of wall of the pocket. So now that I have that, I can select them again and Command C, Command V to paste it and then put it down here in the corner, somewhere like that. Uh, let's keep it a nice uh, rounded number. So what I could do now is just copy it and then do another copy and paste and move it over here. But to be really symmetrical about it, I can do something really simple where I come in here to sketch and make a polyline in the center. So this right here is the center of it. And I'll just make a line. So once I have that line, I can select the four uh, cylinders that I'm going to use to make a hole and then come up here to pattern, mirror, since I already have the solid selected, I'll change the mode to mirror plane and select that uh, line. And then I get a preview of the mirror, which is great. That's all I need. So with those changes, that's pretty much all I need to do. At this point, I can save it out. Because uh, if I ever need to make a, an adjustment to it, I have all the shapes still before I do a 
uh, combine or boolean and subtract. So I'll come over here to combine and hit subtract and select the main body as the target and it automatically changes the source um, to so I can select all these things that I want to cut away from it. So I'll just select these like that. I could use a marquee selection, but I find clicking on the object's user. I'll hit enter, and that's pretty much it. The last thing I can do is add a <laughs> press E on my keyboard and select these edges to make a fillet. Just to make it kind of cool looking, kind of nice. I'll put two, hit enter, and that's pretty much it. Interesting way, really quick way to uh, make uh, a pocket, a sleeve, a protector thing for your LiPo batteries. So if you're looking to embed your projects, into e-textile stuff, um, this is one way to do it. I have it linked below so you guys can download the STL and download the 123D file. But if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time.